Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Tuesday. It is the third day of August, year of our Lord, 2001. I do pray this finds you well. Another beautiful day outside today. It looks like the heat's going to be building back in as we approach the weekend. Just a couple of announcements about uh, some of the things coming up. Um, I'll be out of town. I'll be doing this devotional tomorrow night, but then I'll be out of town for about a week. And I'll be in a place where I will not be able to communicate with just about anybody. So uh, there will be no devotionals those nights. But when I get back, then you will see me, Lord willing, here again. Um, also coming up in just a couple of weeks, and uh, I can check the date, uh, but check the church bulletin. And let me look it up right here. We have the Family Fun Day, which is an education day. And um, I'm looking up the calendar here, so bear with me. That's going to be the 21st of, of August. We have the Family Fun Day. And that, again, we're going to focus on forgiveness. There's, there's always a little teaching. It's kind of like our, our version of Vacation Bible School. Some churches have a week-long Vacation Bible School. Uh, we made the decision a number of years ago that we're going to do it um, in one day. And everybody's going to be involved, the families. Uh, so our church is involved. We have a big cookout that day. We have fun things to do. And then we have a talent show. So the theme will be forgiveness and come and be part of that day. Come and learn. And it's open to anybody. Anybody can come to that. And uh, anyway, you'll enjoy yourself tremendously. Also, uh, looking ahead, there'll be training for the youth group leaders. That'll be the week after I get back from vacation. Uh, I don't remember the date, but the, 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 and the reason I'm bringing it up is because we are starting a, a youth group, kind of long overdue. Uh, at a manual, and it takes a lot of logistics to get in place. Just uh, any, in any, they don't have to be a member of our church, any high school age kid, from like confirmation age up until senior high. And what we intend is to do service projects, yes, but to have socialization, just an opportunity for the kids to get to know each other and have fun with each other. That's very important. But then I'll be doing teaching as well. We'll have lay leaders that will be leading the kids and, and uh, you know, keeping an eye on things and stuff like that. But I also will be teaching, and the focus will be on what they're going to face as they go off into college, and the truth of the Word, how we defend the Word of God. I want them to be prepared for the challenges they go to college, you know, that and already things they're hearing in the in the world about them, about how we defend truthfully and honestly the veracity of Holy Scripture, and that God indeed did walk among us. So that, the youth group itself will be starting shortly after Labor Day. Details will be sent out to the eligible youth. And again, that's open to any youth. We encourage our kids to bring friends. Uh, but uh, hopefully it'll, it'll uh, just continue to gather, gather some steam. We'll invite the kids from other churches to be part of that as well. And you can pray about that, and, uh, that it would go well. So those are some of the things coming up as we're already looking towards Late summer and fall activities, kind of the traditional beginning of school activities. There'll be more Bible studies coming. We'll have the Tuesday night Bible study that'll resume right after Labor Day. Book club will resume right after Labor Day. In fact, the book club group's going to have a we're going to have a game night and a picnic, a barbecue and picnic at my house, on the, which we where we traditionally meet for book club. I think the last Monday in August, if that that uh, if that uh, if uh, if memory serves me well. And anyway. Um, lots of activities, so you know, check the calendar frequently because uh, things start happening very rapidly. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And I'm going to read, I'm not going to sing it tonight because it's long, and that would make it um, that much longer, although it was written to be sung. And I'm going to read for you the 68th Psalm. It's a long psalm, 30-some verses, and I'll read them all. And the inscription is, To the choir master, a psalm of David, a song. So David wrote it, it's a song, and he gives it to the choir master to be used in the temple. Probably a processional song. As people were entering the temple, we use those in our church. We have entrance hymns, processions, and stuff like that. And uh, some hymns are better than that than others. But we actually have special music just for that as well. So again, this is the 68th Psalm. To the choir master, a psalm of David, a song. God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered. 
and those who hate him shall flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so shall you drive them away. As wax melts before fire, so the wicked shall perish before God. But the righteous shall be glad. They shall exult before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exult before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain, before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you shed abroad. You restore your inheritance as it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. The Lord gives the word. The women who announce the news are a great host. The kings of armies, they flee, they flee. The women at home divide the spoil, though you men lie among the sheepfolds. The wings of a dove covered with silver and pinions with shimmering gold. When the Almighty scatters kings there, let snow fall in Zalman. O mountain of God, mountain of Bashan, O many-peaked mountain, mountain of Bashan, why do you look with hatred, O many-peaked mountain, at the mount that God desired for his abode, yes, where the Lord will dwell forever? The chariots of God are twice ten thousand, that thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them. Sinai is now in the sanctuary. You ascend on high, leading a host of captives in your train, and receiving gifts among men, even among the rebellious that the Lord God may dwell there. Blessed be the Lord who daily bears up us, bears us up. God is our salvation. Our God is a God of salvation. And to God the Lord belongs deliverance from death. But God will strike the heads of his enemies, the hairy crown of him who walks in his guilty way. The Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea, that you may strike your feet on their blood that the tongues of your dogs may have their portion from the foe. Your procession is seen, O God, the procession of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers in front, the musicians last, between them virgins playing tambourines. Bless God in the great congregation, O Lord, O you who are of Israel's fountain. There is Benjamin, the least of them, in the lead, the princes of Judah in their throng, the princes of Zebulun, the princes of Naphtali. Summon your power, O God, O power of God, by which you have worked for us. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings shall bear gifts to you. Rebuke the beasts that dwell among the reeds, the herds of bulls with calves of the peoples. Trample underfoot those who lust after tribute. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Nobles shall come from Egypt. Cush shall hasten to stretch out her hands to God. O kingdoms of the earth, sing to God, sing praises to God, to him who rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. Behold, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, and whose power is on the skies. Awesome is God from his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He is the one who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Thus, the 68th Psalm with that wonderful doxology that we call the Gloria Patri, or Glory Be to the Father, at the end of that. We say that at the end of Psalms, with very few exceptions, really just as Lent is drawing a close, we drop those out. And I didn't read the word sila. It shows up in the Psalm three times, I think, if I counted correctly. Um, yes, three times. And it's a liturgical, four times. Uh, three times, sorry, I'm looking at a different Psalm. We... We don't know what it means. It means the, the Hebrew word means lift up, but we don't know liturgically what that means. It's some sort of musical notation, but I didn't read that. Sometimes you'll hear uh, somebody read this and they will say that there's nothing wrong with saying it. it. just It's just a notation for the musicians, what they're supposed to do. And again, we don't know what that was. So there's a lot I could say about this psalm. Let's see, we're nine minutes, 48 seconds already, so I'll try to control myself. God shall arise, the psalm begins, his enemies shall be scattered. Now that's a reminder of, of who's in charge. 
and ultimately the enemies of God will be scattered. Take comfort in that, my friends. It's in these dark and latter days when it seems like everybody but God's people have the upper hand, and we are hated. But God will scatter his enemies, and those who hate him shall flee before him. Uh, so as smoke is driven away, so shall they be driven away. will be nothing. You know, so it goes on to talk about God's victory. And I think about that, you know, the context of this is David is, is writing this, you know, to as people process into the temple, this is where that happens. You know, this is where the victory of Christ, and, and, and now this is in, in the New Testament, the temple is replaced and fulfilled in Christ. And now it is the New Testament church that is the temple. You know, we are actually the temple of God because Christ comes into us, the Holy Spirit comes into us, and God dwells among us and in us. So we are the temple, and we're, that, we're told that in Scripture. That's not a surprise to anybody. But church is where that happens. Church meaning where the word is proclaimed, the word of Christ, the gospel, and we baptize and we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We do the things Christ told us to do. That's how we come into this blessing. And this is how the enemy is driven away from us, meaning that you know, Satan has no power. I mean, you know, if Christ is living in you, I mean, Satan can still harass you and whisper in your ear, but you have, he, he's not moving in. You know, because you have Christ living in you, and, and Christ and the Spirit as they live in you, you open your eyes to see the world as it truly is and what they've truly done. It's remarkable. So we hear about that. We hear about the holy habitation. Um, interesting about women being, and today the the, uh, the church celebrates the myrrh bearers. So you know, Dorcas and Mary and uh, uh, these women that are mentioned in Scripture, uh, wives of disciples and apostles, and they have the women have the great honor of being the ones who see the re get to announce the resurrection to the world. You know, they're the first to see Christ, Mary in particular, and they get to announce. The so women who announce the news, you know, are her great host. It, it's it's wonderful, and you think about what a nice reversal it is because Eve, even though Adam was there with her, you know, she by her speaking and arguing with the devil caused this. Well, her husband did as well because he did nothing. I don't want to just throw her under the bus. But um, but here women, you know, because Christ has restored things, get to announce it. And then we hear um, this. This is quoted for us in the New Testament. You ascended on high, leading the host of captives in your train. That's verse 18. And that's cited in Ephesians. If you're in my Sunday morning Ephesians class, we're getting to that very quickly. That's from Ephesians chapter 4. You know how Christ... When he breaks open death, we're, we're, we're held captive by sin and death. But Christ, as he breaks open death, you know, now pulls us out captives. He leads us out in his train. Uh, it, it, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And then how uh, all will come and look upon him. You know, now the church goes out, but meaning that all will come and look upon the fulfillment of that, what happened on that mountain of old, the temple mount, which is Christ, you know. Christ, you know, the mountain is moved in Christ. The mountain goes out in Christ. And and as we carry Christ with us, every people see it. They, they may not, not acknowledge it. So we, we see this as the psalm, as the psalm draws to a close, because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings shall bear gifts to you. And that's a nod to, the, the of course, the Magi at Christmas, but also the Epiphany, but also what's happening now, that that. In Christ, who is the mountain, uh, that every, you know, where can you go anymore where Christendom hasn't been proclaimed and where, you know, at least rulers haven't heard of them? And, you know, think of the history of Europe and how the rulers, even though they often fought against each other, sin is, you know, think about your own family. Christians still fight against each other there, too. Yet in Christendom, you know, we had these wonderful Christian leaders. And Christianity was sort of this thread that ran through the history in a good way, sort of restored things and, and really allowed the West to become what it is even to this day. And really, even though it took time and it still takes time, began to push away the bad things, you know, the, the, that, that, the subjugation of, of the opposite sex women that went away, started going away very quickly. And women, you know, caring for the sick and the dying, all Christian themes. Alvin Schmidt writes brilliantly about this in his book, How Christianity Changed the World. Uh, if you want to borrow that, let me know. Uh, and then, you know, laws, charity. Uh, I think about the subjugation of women and how, you know, and slavery. You know, where Christianity has taken hold, slavery has died, has died out. 
It takes a little while in some places and sometimes, but it dies out. Uh, remarkable. So, beautiful psalm. Again, there's more, so much more we can say about them. I'm already way over, so let's just go ahead and, and, uh, and finish. I believe in one God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, deliver us from temptation and from the power of the evil one. Keep us ever mindful of Christ's victory over Satan and over death itself. Forgive our many failures as we succumb to temptation. Be with those who are addicted and are despairing of your love. Uphold those who are tortured and oppressed, especially those tortured and oppressed for your name's sake. Turn the hearts of those who oppress your people and torture your people and persecute your church, that they may stand alongside us and proclaim your glorious name. And be with all of us as we struggle day to day with sin. Keep us ever mindful of the unending forgiveness in Christ our Lord. Strengthen us by your Spirit that we may stand firm, that we may resist temptation, and bless us. Heavenly Father, be with those who are crying out to you. Uh, those who have asked for our prayers, but uh, have asked me not to name them publicly, but they are known to you. We ask you to place your hand upon them and their family, uh, and according to your gracious will, heal them. Be with a dear friend of our congregation, Jason, Kelly. We ask you to be with them as they struggle with illnesses. Uh, may their treatments be effective. Be with the nurses and doctors who care for them, and bless their families. Uphold them as well. Keep all of us mindful of your of your victory even over death itself, that we may have peace in all circumstances in our life. Be with our brother in Christ, Len, as he continues to struggle with the infirmity of, 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 of age and the frailty of flesh. Heavenly Father, again, we ask you to be with all who cry out to you, and according to your gracious will, place your healing hand upon them. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And again, I know I'm way over, um, but I'm going to sing just a little bit. There's five stanzas all together. I'll just sing one of hymn number 611, Chief of Sinners Though I Be. Chief of sinners though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. Died that I might live on high, Lives that I might never die, as the branches to the vine, I am his and he is mine. And that stands at one of five of hymn number 611. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.